Our guests on the program from the Board of Education, the president of the board, Jackie Long. He didn't come in empty-handed either. I assume these are gifts from Ron? Yes. Yes. All right. It's just, you know, I went to Costco, and the Halloween stuff is everywhere, so I figured it must be close. Uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Pumpkins, right? Not, not breakfast material, but... M&M's no. Mix. So it's, uh, oh, this is the classic. Peanut butter, peanut butter milk chocolate. And peanut, yeah. So it's chocolate and chocolate. It's uh, it's a, it's a. You know, I just got my teeth cleaned yesterday yeah. at the dentist office, yeah. which was quite. The the hygienist was out, so the dentist actually had to do the teeth cleaning, and that I don't know how often they do this, but I but I almost got drowned yesterday. <laughs> you know when they did, they used to grab the hook and just scrape. Yeah, yeah. Now they use the drill, the the little power drill thing to scrape, and then they're like. He was, he was putting the, the, the water, you know, they, they do like the, the little squirter thing, whatever they I don't know the technical dental terms for these things. But I felt like I was getting like power washed and sandblasted at the same time while I'm in this chair. Water's flying everywhere. I think a guppy came out somewhere. I'm not sure. But have you noticed you sit there for 45 minutes drilling, scraping, um, blasting, and then they sit in your hygienist. And I have a wonderful dentist and hygienist. But at the end, they say, oh, you have beautiful teeth. <laughs> Why did you pick for 45 minutes? Well, you do now because they got finished doing that. Anyway, good morning to Melissa Power as well, the vice president of the BOE. Good morning. Your eyes are sparkly this morning. Uh oh. <laughs> you, you have Is a, that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. You've uh, got a cautiously optimistic, smiling glint. I'm cautious because, let me tell you, listening to the three of you yeah. is very, very interesting in the morning. I'm <laughs> worried that it's going to rear its ugly head on to all, both of us. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, like, over here on the side. Well, our yeah. head ja- going. Jackie brought in goodies. <laughs> yes. Melissa gave a kiss on the cheek and said, take it or leave it. And, <laughs> and, say, and I started to say, <laughs> I'll leave it. <laughs> But you took it. Yeah, you took I it. did take it, yeah. You want to backhand him now, Melissa, or later? I, my, my heart hurts. Yeah, so you hurt Melissa's feelings. Your heart well, so, never hurts. So will Bill. <laughs> so will Bill when he gets home and Bonnie I lets him know. To you now. You're going to come and attack me too. Good it got, gravy. It got turned on Melissa quickly. If you missed it, Jackie just said, your there heart never hurts. <laughs> you had a good run going, Melissa. I did, Thank not you, anymore. Jackie. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my. Damon, <laughs> can you come help me? <laughs> Maybe I'll have yeah. some help from someone else. This is getting else. good. This is getting good. Oh no! Yeah, we're, I don't want to. I don't want to get in the way of this role that Jackie's on here. Your heart never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you she devil, you. <laughs> yeah, that was oh. awesome. Good job, Jack. Yeah, I came my moment. <laughs> yeah, you, you came sharpened elbows today. You need to watch more board meetings. I yeah. guess we I sometimes guess. get our elbows in with her, and she'll get her elbows in with us, so it's fine. Yeah, it works. She's a she's a KG vet. She you know. She oh, she does. The wars. And she'll do it when you least expect it. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All those years have some usefulness. Yeah. Yeah. Some usefulness. Yeah. Yes. Not not yeah. all of them. Well, I considered all of them. You all don't. Look, I consider some of your opinions to be very good. However, go. we need go to go. hear you. <laughs> yeah, no one can hear me at board meetings, just like they don't hear me here sometimes. I told you you speak softly. I know. I can't imagine that. I never spoke softly. You disagreed with me the first time I told you that. I know, but I don't know because too many people tell me that. Yeah. You need one of these microphones in front of you. Yeah, I told them that at the board meetings. That's what they used to have at board meetings, these mics. So. Yeah. So got, we're getting something different. So I have your mic almost at max volume right now. Oh, well, that's good. Just so everybody can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Because people, the last appearance you made, we did get comments that I can't yeah, hear I can't, Jackie. Yeah, I know. Like, and I, they, that was they, disappointing to me because I had so much vital information. You do have a lot to say. Yeah, it may have been disappointing you, Jackie, but everybody else <laughs> greeted with some Yeah, they, I noticed on Facebook they were having their own conversation <laughs> out there about... Just a little bit of everything. Well, they do that anyway. Yeah, I know they do. They do. Usually you're part of it. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we usually have <laughs> the page. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. I will say that. That is true. Hey, first day of school is when? Next the week. Twi- uh, the 19th. 19th. So Teachers went back yesterday. Well, that's next Monday. Yes. The 19th. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, what is the new policy regarding cell phones in uh, the schools? Um, well, I bought it with me. It's Thank you. It's... Um, where do you want me to start? From the beginning. Oh, I had a feeling you were going to say Grades, that. <laughs> uh, high school, kindergarten. Uh, students in pre-K may bring their electronic devices to school, but they must be placed on silent and turned off and must remain in a student's locker, backpack, or teacher-designated area uh, for off and away. And what grade is that? K through five. K through five, okay. Pre-K through five. 
Students in grades 6 through 12 may bring their electronic devices to school, but they must be placed on silent or off. And we changed this some, did we not, mm -hmm. Melissa? We did. It, it, this is the policy we had to vote on that night, but they will be able to uh, access their electronic devices before school, at lunch, and after school. Okay. Other than that, they'll be off and away. All right. And there, there are there exceptions. exceptions. Yeah. Such as? Um, well, if there is a student who has a health issue um, and they need to utilize their phone in some capacity, um, I'm thinking of those who might be diabetic, who need to check their sugar numbers throughout the day just to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, and then there's also exceptions for when there's, you know, if there's inclement weather and they're already at school and they have to do an early dismissal, there will be some, um, you know, allowances for kids to get out their cell phones to make sure that they've communicated with their caregivers. Um, to expect them to come home. How is this enforced, by the way? Um, sc School-wide, uh, principal-wide, teacher-wide. So, uh, I'm, I'm when I go into the 30 kids go into a classroom. Yeah. Does the teacher say everybody silence your phones? Everybody turn your phones off? Is, is that well, an announcement well, that's made? Well, phones should be off the beginning of the school year. I mean, beginning of the school day, off and away. You say off and away. What do you mean by away? Away in a backpack, a locker. So Teach not, a designated area. Not in your yeah. pocket. Not in your pocket. So when I walk into the classroom, I shouldn't have my phone in my pocket, but what happens if I do? Well, it'll be taken away from you. There are consequences. Yeah, oh. let's hear. Okay, I've got to find that page. I knew you were going to ask me this, so I brought it. Thank you, Jackie. That's why you're the president. <laughs> I knew there was some reason. And, I went to order. And what? that's why you have no heart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jack, I mean, really. Jackie or this, Melissa? <laughs> you guys are hammering hard this morning. I mean, good golly. I might not come back. <laughs> give a simple kiss on the cheek and there it goes. We know what the intro is going to be tomorrow now. <laughs> you, need give him, you need to give him a piece of chocolate. Yeah. So. Man, Bill's, yeah not a bad idea, Rob. <laughs> Bill's hangry right now. He's hangry. Yeah, evidently, can we break out the the chocolate over here for him. There you go. Bill, pass it down. <laughs> well, uh, for elementary, there are four fences. Um, but I think, did we not, um, we're going to combine three and four. The first offense is a warning. The second offense is teacher and parent contact. And the third offense is parent and teacher contact and detention. And then the fourth offense is administrator, parent contact, and parents must retrieve the phone. But some we have, as a board and a superintendent, decided to combine some of the three and four offenses. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe this copy was the one that is before we made some changes yeah, we, to we it as collectively together. Um, Did you model this after any particular school districts? Oh, hi, yeah, but we... Um, yeah. Um, put, change some we, things. We put some, some more strength behind it. Um, it, we wanted to give the teachers and the principals a little bit more leverage um, <clears throat> when it comes to being able to enforce this. But at the same time, we wanted to make it consistent. So it doesn't matter if there's a substitute that is subbing for Hedgesville High School. When they go to Spring Mills High School, it's the same policy. It's the same roadmap. Uh, we didn't want there to be any confusion. We didn't want any confusion for parents to know what that looks like for their child. And we didn't want the children to be confused as to, you know, if they go from one one school into the next school, because we do have some some youth that, that are transient, so they can go from one school to the next in the county. And then there's always, you know, you're, you're progressing in grades. So, I mean, yeah. you, you're getting elementary going into middle and then high school. Isn't this a play on words, give the teachers flexibility, but consistency among the schools? When I say, when I say flexibility, it gives them the ability to utilize phones in certain classrooms, such as if they have, um, to give for an instance, um, Mr. Journalism. Martin, yes, in journalism, you might have to take some pictures. You might have to be able to do things that require you to use a camera. And most of our kids will probably use the cameras on their phones because those are the camera. Well, first of all, it's not cheap to buy a, a good camera. And the cameras that are on our phones now are very, very highly sophisticated. So we wanted to make sure that there was that allowance for the teacher to be able to incorporate that in. But at the same time, for many of our teachers, I would say majority of our teachers, they're not going to need to utilize the phone because they have, the youth have uh, iPads and laptops. They're not gonna need any other electronic device, that's it. So 
it so gives them the ability to put it now. away. They don't. Correct. So, so I'll add on to what Bill was saying about the play on words. Um, the uh, when you talk about well, you have to might need your phone to take pictures in a class, science class, something. But yet, mm. not or, science class. Or okay, journalism, journalism. and okay. and and maybe even a photography course. That, I mean, you're but, being very specific and narrow. But we started yeah. off by saying they should have them in possibly in their lockers. Correct. A lot of the kids so the, actually don't use lockers. A lot of the kids actually don't don't do that anymore. They use their backpacks. So telling them to put them in their lockers might be counterproductive to bring them to journalism well class. let me ask a question when you would when you were in high school we didn't have cell phones no 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 no. <laughs> but no hold on but you had books we did and you had different binders yes okay you we went used to, lockers right but you would go to your locker for your your sake of the argument if you put the phone away in the locker well then how do you how do you get it right. well you have class change and in between class change you go to the locker you get what you need go to the class and then when you're done you go back to the locker it's just what happens when you when you're in in school we just have to rethink that this is this is a tool this is this is not something that is attached to your hip for the rest of your life it is supposed to be used as a tool and we're just giving the ability for our teachers to and our staff to be able to actually utilize it as a tool and then there'll be as Melissa said, there will be classes that the student can use your, their cell phone in. Other than that, they need to be off and away. They need to put them away, period. We, we happen to have a substitute teacher on the mm -hmm. payroll here as a producer of this program today, Chillin Dylan Bishop. Hello. Hello. Dylan, your thoughts on this policy and how it will be enforced by teachers? Um, I think it, it makes sense. Uh, it's kind of, you know, beginning of the day, end of the day, lunch is kind of, you would think, the only time a, a student should have uh, their phone out unless it's for you know instructional purposes uh, how would you say to handle a student that says it has their phone out you've gotten to the point where you need to take it from them mm -hmm. and they say no I'm not giving it to you mm. so there's a few different ways that that they can go about that first you know there's there's always the insubordination um, aspect to our discipline policy so at this point now you're not even you're not just following the direction of, of a cell phone policy. Now you're following the, the direction uh, or not following the direction of, of the staff. So now we're getting into some additional items here that and that will result in additional consequences because of insubordination, not following directions, you're being disruptive in class. Like there's, there's a few other things there that we can start diving into because of that you're not listening. Well, and that and that the cell phone violations are also uh, now incorporated into our discipline policy. And I didn't bring it because it's 50 pages long. So um, this applies to iPhones. What about iPads? Any? Well, they have their iPads or their own iPad, their school iPads. Yes. That they're going to be using in class. Okay, so they don't but need what a phone. what about their own iPads, a personal iPad? Do they? They're not allowed to bring that to school. Okay. And so the school issued iPad have certain restrictions built in. That yes. Certain, that what they can and cannot yes. access. Yes. Whose job is it to keep track of violation number one, two, three, four? Well, the same people that keep track of those violations now. I mean, the teacher writes them up. Teacher. Mm -hmm. And sends them to. Uh, they'll be the in Weebus. Terms. Yeah, and they'll go in Weebus. And then, you know, the, the uh, warnings and the offenses will be followed just as I wrote, uh, just as I read them there. So well, I think this is a good policy. I think it's a good plan. A lot of people have been asking about this and asking for it for years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Why the impetus to do it now? I, well, my opinion, go ahead. We've had a lot of discipline issues. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's something that I think, you know, we've mentioned here and there over the last, at least for my tenure of two years, mm -hmm. um, but in the last, you know, six months or so, we've just, there's been um, a spotlight that was shed onto some things that made made us sit there and go, you know what, we're not dragging our feet anymore. We're not waiting around anymore. We're going to, we're going to do this. And this is what we would like to do collectively as a whole. We, we felt that there was a need for some additional guidance. Um, and each one of us had different thoughts about it. And we express those thoughts and you know that was that's a good place for our board we I, I correct me if i'm wrong um jackie each of us had different ideas a lot were similar um some were different but we listened to all of our thoughts and 
we were able to, you know, grab a policy from another county in West Virginia and tailor it to Berkeley County schools. And actually, Dr. Sachs had a lot of input in the yes. policy. He, um, did they have a policy in Huntington, Capital County, about something? Uh, I don't think they don't did think so. uh, at, at that time. And I don't know if they do now, but I know he retrieved this from Ohio County. And some mm -hmm. of our principals have also um, came up with policies from other counties. But yeah. uh, this is a fairly recent phenomena. Uh, I read somewhere something 30 states have some sort of mm -hmm. control iPad, yet three years or so ago it was unheard of. And now it's spread throughout the country. What? Everybody's putting some prohibition on iPhones. I think it plays such an important part mm -hmm. in our discipline mm -hmm. that, um, and our academics. You know, s kids have their heads stuck in their cell yeah. phone 24-7. Not to mention it's very disrespectful to the teachers. Oh, they're yeah. They're trying to educate these children. Yes. When their children are using their phones oh. during class time and... I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a, what, a one or two day implementation period before they hit the progressive disciplinary uh, oh, I, I'm, approach to this policy I, you know, since it's new. I, I'll say this much. I, <laughs> I, there's always going to be one or that two. could potentially get to that three or four Real on fast. that very first day of school, especially this is new. This is yeah. not, they're not going to understand it. And, you know, one of the things that, that, I've done when I was researching how counties have implemented this. Um, all of all of the um, articles I've read where they've actually talked about this said that the first two, three weeks is likely going to be the hardest mm -hmm. because it's a new habit. You have to, you know, get to a place where everybody understands. And, and I hate that that's also at the beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it sets the tone for the rest of the school year as well. So these first three weeks are gonna be crucial for our teachers and for our other staff members to, to really take this policy and put it into place. But at the same time, at the end of it, they're actually seeing that our kid, that the kids in those counties actually like it. They like to be able to put it away. They don't get it at first, but then on that other side, once you get past that, there's there are kids that have gone on record saying this is the best thing that they've that they've done. It actually takes a lot of the drama out. Um, you know, I think out it's of our I day. think it's a good policy mm -hmm. as long as it's enforced. Yeah, oh, it's going to have to be. Enforced. It has to be because we included words that say shall. You have to. There is no. There is no may. It, it may. There is none. You shall do this. You ha you will have to do it. And at that point, if a if you've got a teacher or a um, administrator or someone else that is not enforcing this, that's a human resources thing that we're not involved with that will have to take place. Well, that, that would be an, uh, that would be a teacher that's not following policies. Yes. Or or administrator or or other staff member. It could be an aide. Could be a bus driver. Could be any a, any number of individuals that that. Are in our county, and I liken it to. Um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, sorry. I'm well, sorry. Well, I, I yeah. like. <laughs> I liken it to when we had the cyber attack, and yes. students had to use pencil and paper. Wow, they were what thrilled. a concept! Oh yeah, they yeah, were. They thrilled. were thrilled. They loved yeah. it. They loved it. Because it was so, new. It was yeah. new. <laughs> Just don't yeah. ask yeah. them to write in cursive. Yeah, what, exactly. <laughs> once, once you've implemented the iPhone ban prohibition in schools would you extend that to the restaurants you mean the cafeteria or you mean no no i'm talking about restaurants as <laughs> a whole go out in the community boy go bill to you're theater. not gonna get me to bite are on you that. learning <laughs> well what are you learning are you are, are I, is is cell phones in impeding your your learning ability in a I restaurant i think it would be a good idea I mean, though that fell flat I think, <laughs> bill i think that falls under our authority at the health department <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, did you have another question, sir? Uh, just kind of thinking about it logistically. Sure. Basi uh, and this is going off of mostly subbing in middle schools and high schools. Is the change here basically like how kids would have their phones out between classes? Because I think beginning of day, end of day, lunch, where else would they have? Well, beforehand, where else would teachers have been okay with them having their phones out? Would it be basically between classes? or was They're not allowed to have them out in between classes. And I'll give you an example why. If you, when you have your phone out, if you've been restricted for 40, 45 minutes, maybe two hours, let's just say two hours of your day has been restricted from your phone. As an adult, 
I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, I, I, I don't feel connected. I need, I, I need to be back in, you know, I, I feel anxiety as an adult. Can't imagine what that looks like for a child. So a child, if they're getting out and going out into the hallway, guess what happens? Their face is so focused in on the phone they're not going to see the person in front of them they're not going to see that somebody dropped a you know something on the floor and they could increase the chances of trip hazards bumping into people there's now if you've bumped into people now did you bump into me on purpose i mean you're gonna there's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen and it does happen now so we're actually saying no 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 you're you cannot have it out in the hallways i don't think that uh, was that your question dylan it my question was just kind of what where where is it now restricted to have the phones out that it wasn't before i don't think it was restricted anywhere that uh, <laughs> I, I mean i'm just guessing i don't know that i guess uh, another know, thing to what melissa said also when kids have their phone out between class they're t- they can they're tardy for class getting mm-hmm. to class because they've been so obsessed with what they looked at their phone on between classes that um and one other thought i'll, I'll throw in there a 15 second thought we are actually going to help facilitate our teachers and our staff to be able to encourage face-to-face conversations with our with each other with everybody's faces in the phones we've lost that ability to talk to each other this is going to help facilitate that and i think this should be something that everybody should get behind in my opinion. Say, again melissa i was texting somebody i missed what you said could you repeat that one more time not at all i don't have a very 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 nice heart right now because i've been offended been, you got trash today yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. You got trash today i don't want to hear i'm offended thank you, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank, you both. Good night. thank you both for coming in good luck on the way out <laughs> <laughs> oh, 